Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Absolute bitter day today. I think it's around about minus one, minus two, and this wind, which is coming over from the north here, is suddenly dropping the temperatures by a little bit. I've just had to put a bit of a wind break up just on the side of the top there, just to help just keep the wind noise down and just to uh, help to keep me a little bit warmer. So we've just got a quick fire lit there. I'm just making a nice cup of tea just to warm the insides up. What I thought we'd do on today's video is a little bit of carving. Now I was out the other day just practicing with the slingshots and I wanted just to put a cheap tarp up, just a little bit of a windbreak again. And I noticed that a few of the grommets had actually pulled out, so I mended it in the traditional way. I just found an acorn, I just stuffed it just on the inside, bound it with a little bit of cordage and pulled it tight and it seemed to work fine. But when I got back in the house, I thought I'd have a look on YouTube and I came across a couple of interesting ways where you can actually make pegs or little clamps. A, for holding up tarps again, if you've lost a grommet or that kind of thing. They also come in handy if you want to hang something like a mosquito net down, that kind of thing. And also you could use them as a little hand vice. It was something which I saw years and years ago at the Isaac Walton, I think it's the Fly Fishing Museum, which is not too far from us really in Staffordshire. And they were using something very similar back in the 1700s for the land vices for tying flies as you sit you down by the river. So that's what we're going to do today. Like I say, hopefully it's not going to take too long. Hopefully the wind noise isn't going to be too bad. I've just obviously just a little bit of wood just as I was coming through the woods this morning. So that's what we're going to try and that's what we're going to use. Just before we get into the video properly and make a start on the carving and show you the things which we're going to make first of all just thought to show you probably the most simplest way if you do lose a grommet or perhaps you just want to pull the back of your tarp out a little bit you can actually do it in the past i've used anything i've used handfuls of dirt i've used little clumps of leaves but probably the best thing for them are acorns you know conkers little cones small pebbles that kind of thing basically anything that's not going to damage your tarp too much but you've just got to be strong enough that you can actually put a good binding around it, lash it tight and pull everything out. So like I say, at the moment, just a couple of cones here, a conker, they always come in handy. And these are good little things, you, know, you can just carry these in the pocket of a rucksack and these little oak gulls. So back in the summertime, a little wasp would lay its egg, just a little bud there. And then the leaf matter grows around these, probably just to protect the tree more than anything else. And then it makes a nice little cocoon for the wasp to live in. And this one here, I think, has got a little exit also in the summertime then it would drill its way out and then fly off and start this life cycle again. So one of the little things we have to carry, I'm just going to show you quickly, it is quite windy just out there and obviously you know, don't want to make too much noise on the camera. So we're just going to do it now, like I say we just take the camera around there, just snap that little gore just off the twig itself. And this tarp here is a perfect example, like I said this crop has been pulled out and if it wasn't a fastened anything to that, you know, in a strong wind there's a good chance of ripping all that, you know, tearing the tarp all the way. So like I say, just using one of these little goals or something round, like I said in the past you could use a clump of dirt and put it in. Just going to do just fasten it just at the back, just by putting it just at the back of the tarp. Give yourself enough material, I'm just going to twist it just a couple of times and then just have a piece of cordage here. The camera will pick that up. I've just got a clove it's just started. I'm just going to put that just over the top. Just making sure that you get right behind where that material's folded behind and then just tighten this clove edge up. Just like so and then you can actually just peg your tarp out just by using it like that and again you know there's enough material in there this isn't going to rip and it's certainly a lot stronger than just using that all itself because there's a good chance of actually just flooring that and actually ripping your tarp. Like I said, you can put it a bit further up if you wanted to. That then would pull your tarp out, just giving you just a little bit more room on the inside. But I tend to just use this method more, like I say, just for a quick fix when it comes to mending the bottom of the tarp like that. So like I was saying, that's probably the most easiest method, just finding something round like that, just binding it around the decordage and pulling it tight, and that's pretty much your job done. But like I say, when I got in, I was quite interested in finding, you know, just a couple of other methods. You know, anyone that's interested in bushcraft, you know, doesn't need much of an excuse to carve anything out. And these were a couple of the things here which I found and which I was quite interested in. So this one here is the peg and uh, vice clamp. Like I say, I've seen these you know years and years ago and this was traditionally used as a little hand vice for when guys were tying flies down by the river you know today we tend to tie them more in the house but you know back in the day you know this is about watch what was hatching and actually match that fly just by tying them just on a little finger vice something like that and the other one here i will leave the link to the guys uh, website who 
I saw these from and these are quite handy again you know for making them quick repairs if it is that you've lost a tagging point or a pegging point or perhaps you just want to you know hold your tarp up where there isn't a pegging point just give yourself a little bit more strength or perhaps you just want to move a part of it out of the way and just tie it out of the way you know then these will work you know just as well and when it comes to making these kind of things probably takes around about five minutes to make one of those and probably less time to make one of the others so again you know if it is that you need them as and when when you're out down the woods you know these are the kind of things that you can make and you can just sling you know make them as and when you need them so the first one we're going to start off with is this little clamp here like i say very simple to make and it does work quite efficiently i suppose dependent on the kind of tarp the dd tarps are quite slippy but you know certainly on the aqua quest it's got more of a rubberized backing but these do really grip you know really really well so basically just one piece of stick i've cut it into two pieces put a little bit of a groove in it there just so we can just bind everything together like i say i'll show you all this in a second and also just show you just how to make the loops a little bit of cordage there so when it comes to put it on the top i'm just going to fold the fabric in off and i'm just going to place just the bigger section just at the back like so and that little front section i'm just going to slide up two parts there what is going to grip the fabric then we're just going to get the cordage I'm just going to put it just in the groove there I'm going to bind it as tight as we can that then is going to hold all the fabric and all the clamp together and the idea behind it is the tighter you can actually get this binding the more efficiently it does work this cordage itself is just a little bit too thick I could have done with it being just a little bit thinner but I'm just going to bind that down as tight as I can get it and then we're just going to repeat the process on the other side with the other piece of cordage just like so and I'm just going to tighten that up and again we're just going to bind that down as tight as we can get it and there's your little clip your little loop that you can actually just tie things off with and that does all quite securely but it's quite a bit of wind going against that top there you know, there's certainly no way that that's going to pull out so this is the first one we're going to make, like I say, it only takes a few minutes and again, you know, quite an handy thing worth having. So the first thing that we need to do is just decide how big that we want them and probably around about two, two and a half inches long is fine. So I'm just going to make the first mark, which is just going to mark the length of how long it's going to be. The next mark we're going to mark in how far that we're going to make the cut, which is going to split the wood and make that little bit of a notch. Around about half an inch is usually sufficient, so we're just going to mark just another little mark there. And then directly in the centre there we're just going to mark another little line and that's going to be the line or the groove which the cordage goes into so I'm just going to continue this one all the way around and obviously you've got to get both pieces of cordage in there so making it as deep and as wide so you can and once you're around like so I'm just going to clean it out just a little bit so like we're saying so we can get the cordage in there because this one here like I say it's uh, very important that you can tighten it up as tight as you can get it because if not it will slip off so that should do there and what we're going to do there is cut that notch at a 45 degree angle and uh, we're going to try and get that just before the halfway point and what I like to do with this is actually just Cant the stick up at an angle and just saw down pretty much in a straight line. And obviously when you're doing this yourself you can take your time, get them as neat as you want them. Just checking there that that's gone halfway through and that seems okay. And then what we're going to do now is just cut this length off just using this back notch. So now you can see now that's been chopped off, that we've got a couple of notches left. The one there, which is which the cordage is going to go around, and the number seven notch, which you're going to split out just by taking the knife, just pretty much down to the centre. 
just making sure that you meet up with that line don't go any further forward or backwards actually end up splitting it all the way through so I'm going to just draw just a bit of a basic line just at the edge of that little mark there and then just doing the same just on the other side just come up in a nice straight line just make just a little bit of a saw mark and that's going to make it possible then to know where we're splitting it making sure that we're splitting it in the right place and then I'm just going to use just the the blade on this little folder it's not as if we're going to be you know splitting big chunks of wood and then just starting off from the furthest point which is up at this top end here this is your groove here we're just going to batten through very lightly and just split that off a little bit of a, a bit of an hammer here this will do and uh, like I say just this is the bit that you need to be careful of just double checking I'm not taking too much off as you can see now that's split down and we've come to that mark there and there are them two little pieces and that's the back section and that's the front section there and that's where your cord is just going to go in to lash down and if you want to you can just take these edges down it's just going to stop it from uh, digging in the top now you could actually do this prior to cutting this off the stick just make things just a little bit easier it doesn't have to be fancy we'll just round the edges off again just to stop it from sticking through the top just like so and then we do the same just on the back and just round that down just a little bit if you wanted to, just in the jaw section here, you could just take that off and just round that down if you worried that was going to dig in your top. But uh, that's not too bad. So there's the little clamp pretty much made up. All we need now is that little length of cordage with just them two little loops in the end. That's something which I'm just going to show you now. So when it comes to uh, putting the cordage on, we're just going to tie just a little loop like I showed you previously when we put it on the top and the knot which we're going to use is referred to as a poacher's knot or sometimes a scaffolder's knot. I'm just going to show you just using this bright cordage, it's just going to make it just a little bit easier to see on camera than just the bank line when it actually comes to making the, uh, the proper one. I will tie it just out to the bank line. So it's a very simple knot, a very useful knot. And all I'm going to do is just have to just put it around my finger. And then with the thicker cordage, I'm just going to wrap it round twice. You could wrap it round once if you wanted to. And then once you've actually got it round your finger twice like so, we're just going to slip it just off the finger. And then just start using this bigger end here, this long end. We're just going to feed it up through the centre. Just make a little bite just up through the middle like so. And then we can just pull that tight. And there's the little loop made. And then if it is that you want to tighten it up, you just pull on that longer end. And then when you want to loosen it and slacken everything back up, you just pull back on this little tail end. And that'll slacken that up for you. So just repeating the process on the other side, just around the finger, either wrapping it around once or wrapping it around twice. Just up through the centre of it, we're just going to push just the long section, making a little bite up through there. And then once that's come through, we can then just tighten that up. And there's your two little loops there. It's probably referred to as a poacher's knot. You know, I suppose at one time you could stake that down and that would then be a little loop if you're doing any kind of snaring, that kind of thing. It's just going to be exactly the same procedure as what we're going to do with the bank line and that's going to make the loops that tighten up and then we can bind everything up and really tighten that clamp too. So again, just repeating the process with the bank line, just around your finger, just putting it around once and then just making a little bite up through the centre and just tightening that little loop up like so and at this stage I perhaps wouldn't tighten them up too tight you know that will happen you know when we bind everything together and then you've just got to decide how long you want it how long you want to make that loop you know you can decide you know that as you're making them so I'm just going to cut that off there and again just doing the opposite side just around the finger and then put that bite up through the centre like so and then pull that loop tight and then exactly the same kind of thing but just on a smaller scale so we're just going to open them up slightly and then 
when it comes to using the little clamp you just put your fabric just on there like we did earlier close the two up push them as tight as you can get them and what you notice is that line kind of goes off centre but when the fabric's in it then pushes back open and lines up and this is why I'm saying you know I could have done a little bit of thinner cordage perhaps in this thicker bank line because just on this one here it does take a little bit just to get it just to bind into that loop and then we're just going to tighten that up as tight as we can and then just on the opposite side we're just going to run this over the top making sure that that goes in the groove and tighten that loop up and then again just bind it up as tight as we can get it and there's your little clamp made and ready to be used so very simple you know very quick I probably took around about three or four minutes I just moved the camera a couple of times just so you could get a bit of a better angle but again you know very simple to make and a very useful thing learning you know, how to make themselves So running alongside the little clamp here, the next one we're going to do is just a little bit bigger. That's going to be the little wedge and also the little clamp. Very simple, again you just need a couple of sticks and just a little bit of cordage. And the way that this works is we split the stick in half, we just pop just another little stick just running through the centre there which you can see, just bind everything up, just to hold everything. And then we're just going to make just a simple wedge which actually pushes in the back and as that pushes forward them two little jaws on the front there close up like so and as you push that forward them jaws really do tighten up you know and that will take quite a bit of pressure like I've seen traditionally I've seen these used where people would put a hook in the top and just use that for a little bit of fly tying often referred to as a finger vise so again this is something which we're going to make now it doesn't take very long just a couple of minutes we're just going to use just a couple of sticks and the same knife you know just as long as you've got a little bit of cord just to bind that up with you know you can make these two yards content you know they're very quick but they are very efficient so same procedure again we're just going to cut everything to size i'm just going to use just a little formula again and the, the thicker stick here around about three quarters of an inch in diameter this is going to be the part which we're going to split down in two then i'm going to use just a little stick just in the center and then we need a third stick which is going to turn into a little wedge which is going to tighten everything up when it's pushed down the center so again you can make these as big or as small as you want to probably make this one around about four five inches that just like so and then uh, I'm just going to split that down one somewhere there you go just try and get this in the center as much as possible like so and then if you want to tidy any bits up in the middle you can do that and also you can take these edges down just to stop it from digging just in the top and again you can make these as neat you know you can spend ages on them or you can just make them as quick as you need to so and because it's only going to be one set which is going to be touching the top I'm just going to take down and just round off just one end I'm not going to bother with the other end there and then we're going to need just a piece just for the little stick in the centre so I'll just take the bark off this And then once you're happy with the shape and the diameter of the little stick in the centre, probably the only fiddly part when it comes to doing this is just lashing just this cordage around it. I'm just going to use something just a little bit more traditionally, I'm just going to use a little bit of jute. So just cut off just enough just to bind just around both sides. Then when it comes to just to start this off, I'm just going to do just a little clovage. So I'm going to form just two loops and put one behind the other and then we can just feed this 
just over the sticks. Just like so. Not tightening it up too much because we've just got to get this little centre piece in there and then you've just got to decide now how far that you want it up the stick or in the centre. I'll probably do round about there. I'm just going to slide this up just to grip everything up. Just making sure that both of them sticks are sitting level. So once you're happy with the clovitch and that's locked everything together, just checking that them jaws will close flushly, just centralising that stick up. What I'm going to do is just bind it just a couple of times just at the back and then just bring it around and just do the same just on the front there. Just a couple of times will be enough. And then I'm just going to do just a little bit of a timber it, so I'm just going to form a loop. So very similar to just a standard overhand knot, I'm just going to pull that through a couple of times. Like I say, this is probably the most fiddly part of it. for a second time and that will help it just lock together and that's the beauty about jute you know it's a, a good material for knotting all these knots do hold on really well and just tighten that up and that's pretty much everything set up just cut off this little bit of a tag end here like so and there's your little peg sorted and now just out to this part here we're just going to make just a quick wedge And then just like the other little clamp, it's very easy to use and very quick. It's just a case of just getting it and just actually fasten it to the fabric. So just prior to doing that, so I've just got the loop here, which would be my guy line. I'm just going to feed that just over the, the little peg itself. Put that into the fabric. And then we're just going to feed that wedge just up to the back and push it in just so that that tightens them jaws up. And as you can see there, very secure. And then we can just bring this line off and then just wrap it just around your stake and that again is another nice secure fitting Well guys, that's it for this one. I wish I could pack my camp up as quick as that in real time. So you it's going absolutely freezing down here. So I'm just going to spend the next hour now. I'm just going to have a mooch about. Just warm myself up just a little bit. So just leave me say just thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video. I hope that's been a bit of help to people that may be interested in that kind of thing. Just making a few tarp clips or that final one. I suppose you could use that on a washing line. You could use that to hang towels up if you wanted to dry them off. Perhaps say your sleeping bag out, that kind of thing. So like always guys, you just leave me say thanks a lot for you stopping by. Until next time. You take care, and I'll see you again.